I love your new dress. It's very pretty. Hey. What are you going to tell everybody? Hey guys, have a great day. in the past about ADA compliances and requirements and school systems and public places um, for about three years um, I have been battling our town here to get with the school system a better ADA compliant playground um, Sasha is not the only one with a disability and our playground is absolutely horrendous um, it's all different levels there's wood chips, um, stuff has been rusted out, there's no ramps, there's basically, you know, nothing handicapped swings for probably about three years now. Um, our PTO through our school, our parent teacher association basically, um, that I have been on, sorry I'm being mauled by a cat. Um, basically, we all tried to take it on as a project, but the cost of making things ADA compliant and surfacing are extremely expensive. So that's when I decided to go and get an advocate. Our advocate has been a wonderful person for Sasha to have. She knows all the regulations that school is breaking due to IEP and she's just like my fighting force behind Sasha. Sasha. So she got us in touch with a great lawyer about a year and a half ago who does American Disability um, complaints, I guess you would say, um, in a public school system. Bonnie is fantastic. She knows what she's doing. She's probably, I don't know how much she's done, but she's definitely a fighting force. So she told me from the very beginning that you are fighting a huge battle because if the state, if we file a federal complaint and the state sees enough of a need for it, they will come out. But if they don't see enough need for and you don't make enough cause for and you're the only one person causing for this basically almost stink to be made this huge playground this huge cost they may not be bought into it so luckily um the state saw enough of a com a need to fly a company all the way out from california to to take our federal complaint seriously enough so a company from California actually came out this summer and they are basically the ADA American Disabilities Act federal compliant people. So when you have a huge case, they come out and they see this. So I was just talking about the playground. They came out and they gave me paper and they showed me 80 different sighting issues with our playground, not eight, 80. They said, this is how many issues there are. Then they go to me as the town pool over there, part of the town. I said, yes, we all use it. And they went over there and they go, this building was built in the 70s. The doorway is not ADA compliant. There's no bars in the bathroom. There's no handicap stall. There's no access easy in the pool. The, you know, so all these issues came about. So I'm, I'm hoping for the paperwork to be signed really soon here because it's our last piece of the puzzle. But basically we have won a federal lawsuit against uh, the school in the town due to ADA non-compliance because we started this battle three years ago. Town knew about it, principal knew about it. Absolutely nothing has been done. They did put up a paved pathway on the bigger playground for Sasha and a swing that is handicap accessible. And that's all I've gotten out of this project. So for three years I've been fighting this 
to make it more ADA compliant so the surfacing is better because these wood chips, um, you can't even stick a wheelchair through it. It's a very sad situation. All the pavement's very uneven. And it's great for the average child, but when you have a mobility issue, you know, surfacing and just the slightest bit of elevation difference, whether you're in a walker or a wheelchair or just walking with arm crutches can mean a huge trip in the fall. So hopefully, once we get all the paperwork signed, everything will be ready to be done off and we will be on this way to getting a new playground. And they also have to change the pool in the pool building due to it's not compliant. And my lawyer basically told me, and it's been in all of our local papers, they can't say my name due to no paperwork has been signed yet and legally you can't do that. Um, so I found one interesting fact in the local paper yesterday, so I was gonna read it to you guys. So our local town paper, there was an article and they were talking about the renovations that need to be done and they don't even know I filed a federal lawsuit yet, like I said, because the paperwork is not filled out as of yet. I'm getting photobombed by a cat, so don't mind me. So basically I read this one thing in the paper that just kind of totally set me off because it was like, basically if you have a disability problem or mobility issues within the school, they won't do about, they won't do anything about it unless you actually speak up about it. So sorry if I'm bending down, but it says the projects were first considered in light of the state requiring the school to update its playground to meet requirements of the American Disabilities Act or according to the rules of the act, existing facilities that are out of compliance don't have to be updated unless renovations are being done or unless a member of the public asks for upgrades. The ADA upgrades were requested by a family in town with a disabled child. Yes, that was me. I'm not shy, I'm not gonna hide behind it. But I found that kind of interesting now that the town or the school has no requirements for ADA, but I thought it was almost a law within guidelines of the state. I don't know my law, so don't be holding me to it. But I found it kind of crazy that, you know, you have to speak up as a community member to make this happen, that there aren't other people in the community or the school board or the school system looking out for children with disabilities, especially mobility issues. You as a parent have to take the initiative and make it happen. Kids and adults in Winchester, recess can be a struggle. WHAG's Rachel Charlip spoke to mothers who want their kids to be able to play hassle-free. When this seven-year-old started at the Sensony School as an infant, recess was plain dangerous. He could not navigate through this at all. Like with his walker, the mulch, it would get stuck, he would fall, he would trip, he would come home. I mean, every other day with some scrapes or bruises. Now that her son is older, his cerebral palsy is more manageable and getting around is easier. But for him and many others at the Sensi School, the playground isn't accessible. The Sensini School provides care for those with disabilities from preschool to the age of 21, and everybody wants to go out for recess, but with a three-inch curb surrounding the entire playground, both the teachers and the physically disabled are burdened. About 30% of the school's students are confined to a wheelchair or have limited mobility. Teachers do whatever it takes to make sure any student, child or adult, can play on the playground, but their dedication comes at a physical price. Often, teachers have to carry them to help them access the equipment. For me, I have some back issues, so if we have a preschooler who is uh, abnormally large or, yes, a, an older student, it is difficult. Now, Roland and fellow parent-teacher organization members are raising money to give their kids the playtime they deserve. By installing a flat rubber surface to replace the mulch and cement curb, all students would be able to access the playground with ease. Although the new playground will also mean new expenses. Because it is going to cost us about 80000 over $80,000 to do this. Um, it's 5,200 square feet, so it's a quite a large playground, and it's something that we really feel that's very important to the school. The school hosts students from three counties, so school board funding is limited. In Winchester... <laughs>
playground safe so everyone can play in it. That's right, Sasha. Make playground safe for everyone, not just for certain people. Hey, Mom. Yes. I want to make Peppa's playground. You want to make a Peppa Pig playground? Yep. We can do that.